Hi there, we are nearing the finish line for the Ava pattern making project. I hope you've been following along and doing the pattern work along with me. If you've missed the previous tutorials, click the links on this page and get started. 2020 is the year you pick up some valuable pattern making skills and use them to create something you can actually wear. I'm Alexander Morgan from In-House Patterns and In-House Patterns Studio, and I teach experienced sewers and budding pattern makers how to make and adjust patterns for fit and style. If you've already developed your own personal bodice block, you already know you're ready to join me in this pattern making project. If you don't have a basic bodice block yet, I have a very comprehensive online course that will walk you through all the steps from drafting to fitting. If you just want to give pattern making a try, I've created some free mini block patterns that you can download and print. I'll leave links to both of those resources on this page. This week, we continue the pattern work for the Ava top. Last week, we finished off the back pattern piece, so we're ready to move on to the sleeve and create the neckline facing. But first, let's take a look at what we've done so far. Okay, so let's just summarize what we've done so far. Of course, when we first started out, we wanted to trace our block, we rotated the bust dart to the side seam, and that was simply just to get the styling of that dart away from the neckline so we can then do more design work. We then determined the finished length on our pattern because we want to determine that next. We got the neckline shape and size in. We transferred our neckline contour dart into the hemline in order to create a little bit of flare at the hem. We also transferred and divided that bust dart into these lovely three little darts at the front of the garment. Now last week you're going to remember we worked with the back of the pattern and what we did there is we transferred some of the shoulder dart into the hem so that we can get an equivalent flare at the back as we actually incorporated into the front. So this was a really great little trick that we could use to balance out the flare from front to back of the garment. We also took the remaining part of that shoulder dart and we rotated it so that it would go into the neckline at the back. So it would sort of mimic what we did at the front there. So that's where we sort of left off last week. So I wanna quickly show you my final front and back pattern so that you can kind of get an idea of what they look like. Let's take a look at our front pattern piece first. You can see here that I've actually cut away all the excess paper. I want to just point out here that I have not included seam allowances on this pattern. When I pattern design, I like to keep the seam allowances off until the absolute last possible moment because with the seam allowances on things sort of get a little bit more harder to check and they also get a little bit more confusing as you start to design with the fat with the pattern. So I always like to keep them off until the very, very last minute. So you can see here I've cut around and gotten rid of all that excess paper. I've actually kind of outlined our styling details now and I've put some labeling on. And this is just to make sure that I'm still on track. What we call this particular pattern is called a working pattern, meaning that we've got all the design details kind of incorporated into it. I've got my, it's a little bit patchy simply because because we've got tapes and extra paper kind of put into it. So this is just a part of the whole pattern design process. So as I said, no seam allowances. I've done a little bit of labeling. The labeling by all means is not complete yet, but I'm, it kind of gives me a really good look at what the pattern shape is becoming. I have put in my darts. I've solidified what those styling darts are and I've put in the drill marks. And you'll see I've actually even added the notches into the pattern as well. Now I wanna point out that before you put the notches in, make sure that you've actually checked your pattern, making sure that all the seam line lengths are matching and everything's working. And I'll quickly go through that in a little bit, in a little minute. This is my back pattern piece. This is the one that we worked on last week. 
And you can see here all the styling details are there and I've just outlined everything and a little bit of labeling. Once again, no seam allowances are here and I've actually indicated that on my pattern just to make sure that I don't forget that there are no seam allowances here. So I do wanna point out, as I said, that you do need to double check to make sure that before you move on that all of your seam line lengths are matching. So make sure that you go through a check. Make sure that your shoulder lines are matching make sure that your side seams are matching in length and shape. So I like to walk my pattern making sure that you know, whatever I have on one side is going to match the other. Make sure all the notches are matching and then when all of that is checked and true and made sure to look beautiful then by all means you can kind of cut everything out and add your notches and all of that. So I'm also checking at the base of the armhole here and I often also always check at the hemline here. So making sure that when I put my seams together that my seam lines and hem lines are all nice, smooth, and flowing. If you end up with any points or corners or divots, you wanna make sure that you go back and just double check and smooth them out. And usually it's just a matter of deciding where you need those 90 degree angles in order to make sure that uh, the transition between front and back or the armholes, all of that stuff is um, kind of working really, really nicely. So that's what you're gonna make sure you're doing and then you're gonna notch it all up. This week, I wanna start working with the sleeve. So let's get moving on that. Okay, so as I said, this particular garment only has a little short, cute little sleeve, and it hasn't deviated very much from the basic block pattern. So all we really need to do is take our sleeve pattern and shorten it. So this is what we're gonna do today. We are also going to look at doing the neckline facing for this style. Okay, so here we have the basic block of the sleeve kind of all traced out. All we need to do for this particular sleeve style is decide on what length of sleeve we want. So what we wanna do is simply measure from the top of the sleeve head down to whatever sleeve length you want. As I said, when I originally traced this particular uh, block out, I only traced it to the elbow line because I knew I was making a short sleeve. I like to use a sleeve length of about seven inches for short sleeve. Now this just happens to be a flattering length on me, but you may find that you need to make it shorter or longer in order for it to work for your body and your height and all of that stuff. So make sure that you do a little bit of trial and error. If you're not sure what to do, by all means, you can simply measure some of your other tops that you may have made that you like, or you can just try the seven inches and see how that looks on you. You may need seven and a half, you may need six and a half, but what you wanna try to do is um, kind of keep it below the bicep line to start with. You can always decide on how you want to change it to be shorter after that. And then all you're going to do is square out from the center line of the sleeve on either side. Now sometimes your grid ruler isn't exactly square, so it's a good idea sometimes to use the bicep line as your point of measure here. And I can see that it's one inch below the bicep line, so I can just use my grid like this and plot in my hemline of my sleeve. So really, this is the pattern work done for the sleeve. Now, of course, we have no seam allowances and no hem allowance on this yet, so you must just make record of that if you want to. The grain line on the sleeve, which we haven't talked about grain lines yet exactly, but I always like to reiterate that I always like to use the center line of the sleeve in order to create that grain line. You can actually vary the grain line on the sleeve quite a bit, depending of course on the print that you plan to use, but this is kind of the starting point that you want to make. So we're basically done with the sleeve in terms of it not having no seam allowances or hem allowances on it. We are gonna move on to making the neckline facing next. Okay, so we wanna create a neckline facing so that we can cleanly finish this neckline edge. So here's what we're gonna do. You're gonna need some extra paper because what we're gonna do is trace out the front pattern piece and then we're gonna manipulate that into our facing. So I like to trace more than I need. So I'm just gonna go around the block or the pattern that I've created 
and you'll notice that I'm just tracing everything and I may not need all of this but it's gonna sort of orient things for me um, when I go to do the pattern manipulations so they, these are my little notches for my darts that I'm going to create here at the neckline so I'm just gonna trace those in And then of course I'm going to trace in center front. This is an important part of the facing as well. I also want to make sure that I trace in the dart points here because what I'm going to end up doing on the facing is eliminating these darts on the facing so that we have a nice smooth flat finish to stitch this part of the bodice to. So just making sure that those are transferred through and it looks like they are. And I've got all my notches um, also transferred through. Make sure you don't miss them. I often find that it's hard to realign the pattern after you remove it from the, from the paper. So it's a good idea just to make sure everything is transferred through before you move on. Now we can even transfer the across front line. We won't need this. Um, when it comes to the whole pattern making. But like I said, I always like to start with more information than I need. That way I don't have to backtrack um, if for some reason I decide that I need it. Okay, so I've traced out the front. We're gonna do the same for the back and then we're gonna talk about manipulating those things into the facings. Okay, so here we have my back. I've traced it out. It's not all there yet. We're going to work with it a little bit more, but let's go back to the front for a minute. Okay, so here's my little light tracing of the front uh, neckline area. And what I want to do is draw in those darts because we want to eliminate these dart volumes um, in our facing. So I'm just drawing them in, joining those notches with the dart points because I'm going to actually eliminate them as we go. Okay, so now that we have our darts drawn in, what we can do is manipulate them out of the pattern. And this is what we are going to do. We are going to do our slash and overlap and slash and spread. We're gonna find that when we close this, the bottom part here is gonna open, but we will be eliminating these darts. So it doesn't really matter where you do it. We're gonna use the uh, pivot point of the dart point in order to use the, um, to pivot them closed. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to slash in to this dart point on each of these darts and then I'm also going to slash up from the bottom and then we're going to pivot those darts closed so that we get the neckline that we are actually gonna be working with on our bodice after those darts are stitched closed. Just securing them down. Eliminating that dart volume so that we have our finished neckline shape. Okay, so now you can actually clearly see the neckline that we have. And what we're gonna do, I'll just kind of draw this in a little bit sturdier so that you can see it on camera. This is gonna be the center front here. And we've got our neckline shape here, which I know that I used my curve. So it's very likely when you do this manipulation like this, you might get a little bit of jogginess. All you need to do is go back and clean things up so that it's all nice and smooth again. Now we need to decide on how wide our neckline facing needs to be. Now you need a certain depth in order for it not to wanna to try to crawl out onto the outside of the garment. So I like to use uh, somewhere around two inches to start with. Now you can make it two and a quarter, you can make it one and three quarters, whatever you think is gonna work um, for the fabric that you're using. If you are not stitching it down, the wider it is, the more secure you'll be. 
So all I'm going to do is use two inches as my guide and I'm going to just draw a parallel line from the existing neckline. So you can see I'm just pivoting my ruler around to try and get that shape moving along nicely. Always, always, always have a 90 degree angle off from your center front edge because you know that that facing is going to be on fold just like your center front is. Okay, so there we have the beginning of our lovely little front neckline facing. We are going to move to the back because what we want to do is make sure again that that transition from front to back on the facing is going to work really, really well. So we're not done yet, but we're going to go and move to the back and continue on to develop our back neckline facing. Okay, so here we have our back traced out here and I'm just going to once again draw in my dart here that's at the neckline of the back and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to manipulate this dart out of existence by transferring it out to the bottom there. So we are going to use that dart point as the pivot point and I'm just going to cut down one of the dart legs here and then I'm going to pivot this dart closed so it no longer exists in our facing. And then our next job is to then draw in the width of the neckline facing, which I said was going to be two inches. So we'll use the same thing at the back. And again, just drawing a parallel line from the existing neckline. So you can probably see why not having seam allowances on at this stage is really, really helpful. So, because you don't have to worry about, did I put seam allowance there? How wide is it? How far is it away? It's always a really good idea to leave them off until they're absolutely, absolutely necessary. Okay, so now that we've got that plotted in, what we are going to do is check the transition at the shoulder seam for this. So all I'm going to do is fold back one of the shoulder seam lines so that I can reveal the actual seam line here and place it on the back here. It doesn't matter which one you fold, it could be the front or the back. And this is what I'm talking about here. What you want to do here is make sure that you have a really nice smooth transition from front to back at the edge of the um, facing here. Okay, so this in essence is the front and back neckline facing. So one of the things that we can do in this pattern making process is sort of ensure that the facing doesn't want to kind of climb out of the garment and go to the right side of the garment. So I know in the whole stitching process, what you're going to do to make sure it stays inside is to do the under stitching because that's going to be really, really helpful. But another trick that you can do when you're pattern making is you can actually make this neckline edge ever so slightly larger so that automatically it will roll further inside the garment. So what I like to do is knock back the um, neckline area here by at least about a sixteenth of an inch or an eighth of an inch if your your fabric is a little bit heavier, a little bit sturdier. If it's a really fine fabric, you probably only need to knock it back by about a sixteenth of an inch. Um, but if you're working with like a medium weight fabric or something, you can knock it back by about an eighth of an inch. So all you're going to do is open up this neckline all the way around. I'm going to use an eighth of an inch just simply because it's easier to measure on my ruler here all the way around. Now, of course, this is going to make our facing a little bit narrower than that two inches, but you know what? It's going to be made up by the other by the main part of your fabric, your actual front and back bodice pieces will kind of come around and go inside the garment. So you're still gonna be good to go um, with your facing width. Again, just measuring an eighth of an inch from the neckline edge all the way around. And doing the back as well. exactly like this. Now I'm going to finish this up and I'll come back and show you the finished neckline facings. 
Okay, so what I've done here is just solidified my little sketchy marks here and actually defined the neckline facings as much as I can. So as you know, we knocked back the neckline edge by an eighth of an inch in this case. Like I said, you can use an sixteenth of an inch if your fabric is quite thin, like a chiffon or something. I'm planning on maybe trying this out on a kind of linen fabric, which is about medium weight, sort of. So I think that, um, this one eighth of an inch is gonna work just fine. I always like to cross out any lines that I know are no longer gonna be needed, just so that I don't confuse them later. Now, we don't need um, any other information other than we wanna make sure that we know which side is center front and center back. So you can see here that I have definitely added the center front marking and the center back marking. The other thing that you can do definitely is create a notch on the edge that you're gonna to stitch together, which is always gonna be the shoulder line edge. So I've just put a little mark there somewhere in the middle there, it doesn't matter where it is exactly. And then you're gonna line up your pieces here and transfer that position to your back to make sure that those two notches are going to match when you sew those seams together. This is automatically gonna tell you that this is the shoulder seam and then you won't get confused and think that this is center front or this is center back. So we are going to place this particular part of the pattern on the fold. So I'm just gonna write center front on fold and I'm also going to put center back on fold. So one thing to point out here, which I didn't mention previously, is in order to make sure that you can put both the center front and the center back on fold is to make sure that you have a large enough neckline that you can actually get it over your head. If your neckline is too small, let's say you've chosen to make it quite close to the neck, you may need a center back opening. So just be aware of that. Now the measurement that you need to get over a standard head through the neckline is 22 inches girth. This is the standard head circumference, but sometimes people have a 23 inch circumference on their head. Some of us have very small heads and have like 20 and a half or 21 inch, but between 21 and 23 is pretty standard for your head circumference. Make sure your neckline is going to fit over your head. Let's take a final look at the Ava pattern that we've created. Here we have the front, and you can see here our detailing that we had at the front neckline is all incorporated. We've got some slight flare put into the pattern as well. We've put our grain lines on and we've labeled our pattern. As I said, my patterns don't have seam allowance on them until I'm absolutely done with them. So what I'm going to end up doing is actually adding the seam allowances on my fabric when I go to test this pattern for next week. So we have the grain line, which again is going to be parallel to center front on the front pattern piece. Now we've got the back here as well, and you can see it mimics much of the styling that we put into the front. We've added the flare in a very similar fashion, and we've manipulated our dart here. Again, the center back is going to be set on fold. Our grain line is parallel to the center back. Again, no seam allowances. We'll add it onto the fabric when we test this pattern. Here is our sleeve. Again, very, very simple pattern manipulation for the sleeve. It's really our sleeve block, which we've just shortened. So this is the easiest, kind of quickest sleeve to make and also great for testing fit if you're still working on the fit of your sleeve on your block. And of course, we have manipulated our two facing, so we've got a back facing and a front facing. Both will be placed on fold. The grain line then is, of course, parallel to center front and center back. So these are all the pieces that we need to create our Ava top. With the working pattern completed, we are ready to test the pattern in fabric. Next week, I'll show you exactly how I do it while keeping the final fit my top priority. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know. If you're following along with me and making your own version of the Ava top, please show me your work. You can tag me at in-house patterns on social media, and please use the hashtags, hashtag Ava, hashtag in-house patterns, and hashtag in-house pattern studio. I can't wait to see what you create. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.